Uh, this is a little bit of an experiment that I'm going to try to do uh, based on some of the things that I've done in the past. I've grown a lot of popularity through YouTube and I was thinking how can I like refine YouTube in a better way so that I can teach uh, more students and get more information out about things. And so I created this Bauman Effect. And the Bauman Effect basically kind of started off with how I started teaching, went through the process, and we'll go through a little bit of that, and then how it actually evolved into phone coaching. And right now I have 110 phone coaching students worldwide. So uh, I get up at 4.30 in the morning and I go through 3, 4 on Saturdays to 8 o'clock at night, nonstop, 110 every week, um, half an hour each. And in that process, I have refined my teaching skills to uh, an art. And <laughs> to no pun intended, it was because one of my students up in Canada who actually contacted me uh, wanting coaching, and I said, well, why do you want to coach? And she said, I'm burned out. I'm kind of bored. My paintings have come to a, a dead stop. I don't know how many of you have kind of felt that about, yeah. We just feel like you know, there's just nothing else. And so I started teaching her in this new method. And this method I've been teaching in my classrooms for a while. But when you talk to people over the phone and you create possibilities for them, you really refine this theory. And, and it's a theory that has been developed over the four or five hundred years of art and then was basically forgotten. And it's a theory of painting with temperatures. And it rocks. It's amazing. And so she actually is an acrylic artist and she writes books. And I worked with her for a couple of months and she was kind of very skeptical and standoffish. And finally something clicked and she goes, oh my, why doesn't anybody know about this? And I said, well, I know 110 students that do, plus all of my students in the area. Uh, they've been doing it for years. But she said, this needs, this, we, need to, we need to do this. So she offered to write a book. And she was going to go through all of my YouTube videos. Now, I don't know if you guys have actually seen my YouTube videos, but there's 240 YouTube videos out on me. So there's, there's a lot of information. But there's a lot of information that isn't told in proper context. So for instance, you know, I could teach you calculus but you need to know algebra. And you, know, you don't know what you don't know and you don't know that you don't know it. The problem with my YouTube videos is that I would get a group of students together and we would sit and talk and the, um, the information would be scattered. And she said, well, I'll go through and get all the information. I just thought, that's impossible. Because a lot of people who do my YouTube station realize how impossible it truly is to try to follow it along because you know we'll, go, we'll critique one painting and then another one and something else is brought up and it's just kind of a cluster and if you read on my YouTube videos this is everything you need to know about painting trees and I'll be talking about rainbows and birds and all kinds of things so so what I decided she says we've got to get a book together I said you know what I'm going to try an experiment and this experiment is kind of based a little bit on a very popular course that I used to teach called the Power to Create. And the Power to Create class was an amazing class. I taught it, taught it in the Bay Area. And I've been teaching for 40 years. So I started teaching when I was 14. And then when I was at Stanford, I, I taught you know, full time as a living. And since 1980, I've had roughly about 100 students every week for 40 years. So I've seen it all. And I've had my students do every kind of painting you could possibly imagine. And I found that there's some cons consistencies that you can learn that change the game for everything. These, some of these techniques are taught 
in the old masters school, um, back of the Impressionists and, and before that. And uh, basically after the Impressionists stopped and modernism came, they decided to get rid of all of the rules. And painting with temperature was actually one that they, they uh, dropped. And very few people kind of know about this. And it's funny because when I teach my, my students about temperature, they are amazed. So much so that they go running onto YouTube to find out if anybody else is, is uh, teaching that. And uh, they don't find a lot of information on it. So this is my effort to try to break it down from the very beginning. Everything from what you need to know about painting from the very start. And it doesn't matter if you're doing acrylics or watercolors. All these theories and stuff will go across all of the different mediums. The, the process will be like we'll have the introduction and we'll have a little bit of conversation and we'll talk about really what art is. And then um, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll give a, a little background on myself and you know, how things got developed. Uh, we're going to be carrying on for about an hour. Um, after an hour, we're going to shut off our family on Facebook and we're going to continue on pr uh, filming this for YouTube. Now, how many of you go to YouTube to get your information on painting? Wow. Okay. Um, so, how many of you see my YouTube videos? Same amount of people. You don't go on YouTube? Occasionally. Occasionally, yeah. Um, well, so basically what I want to do is I want to take the, the whole idea of learning how to paint from the very beginning. Like, why do we paint? And then I want to introduce the mediums. All the different kinds of mediums that we use to create art. The brushes, the paints, and so on. I want to talk about brushwork and composition. All from a really basic level. And since I've had so much uh, uh, interaction with students at so many levels, I think I can kind of bring it down to a real simple, basic level. Um, and we're going to kind of go through week by week. After we are through with our conversation and uh, Facebook people, we'll carry on and I'll do a demonstration in the second hour. And in the second hour, I'll actually talk about some of the techniques that I do uh, and kind of how to actually create light in a painting. And that's basically the foundation of what I'm going to be teaching. That's basically the Bauman effect, is getting that light into your painting. After a month, these videos will be put onto Patreon. Uh, new videos will be replaced onto YouTube, so they'll all be available in different ways. So Patreon would be a place where you could actually go through and watch from beginning to end. <clears throat> but the thing is, what I, want, what I try to do when I teach with my students is how to create feeling and emotion. And I do that by understanding how the viewer sees a painting. Now, in, who is ever in this room right now, can you tell me, or even on, on, online you can see whether or not, what do you think art is? What's art? Beauty on canvas. Beauty on canvas. A representation. Representation. What is art? I mean, when we think about art, we think about painting because that's what we do. But when we talk about the arts, we talk about ballet, we talk about writing, we talk about filmmaking. Personal, personal expression. Anything else? Capture the feeling. Capture a feeling. In its highest form, I think it's a connection with the great power of the universe. Mm -hmm. With a capital A in that case. Capital A, you mean like, like a capital G kind of? A kind of thing. That's a whole good book. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Art to me is everything from sketching to my favorite time flies, wood carving, arranged flowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, all of you are correct, but they're all me conversations. Now, I started painting when I was 12 years old. And I sucked. I was, I, you know, my parents owned a bakery. 
And, you know, at that time when I was 12, I wanted to be a bowler. That was my dream. And I had a 230 average at 12. I rocked. People in town would come and watch me bowl. Now, my parents owned a bakery. My father is European trained. And my mom and dad said, there's no way that we're going to bring a bowler into this world. You're going to be a baker or a pastry decorator like your father. So they threw me in art class. They took me out of bowling and threw me into art class. Now my mom was German. <clears throat> so as I grew up, it was always like, you will do it and you will like it. <laughs> and so I said, no, don't want to do it. So I went into, into um, uh, art classes so that I could be trained to decorate cakes. That was the ultimate goal. My mom had my whole life planned in front of me. Never mind what I wanted to do. So I'd sit in this class with people who were all about your age, and I was 12 years old, and I got paint over everybody. And I kind of did. Now, you know a couple of these people in class. In fact, some people know them in my classes. But they basically are really busy throughout the class, waiting for me to come around and paint their painting for them. And so I was one of these students that, I was taking lessons from Ron Villa at the time, and I would sit there being busy getting paint over everybody, and he'd come over and he'd paint my painting. So my parents thought I was a genius. But I really sucked at painting. Um, and then at one point my mother was so determined that I learned this painting thing to decorate cakes that the group got together and they said, we're going to go to Hawaii. And my mom said, that would do it. That would transform my son from a bowler to a painter only if I could get him to go to Hawaii. She was kind of right, but it backfired on her anyway. There I am in Hawaii, kicking sand into everybody's painting and knocking shit over. And my, my teacher at the time really kind of had the group over there because he had family and it was a freeway for him to get over there. But we went over there and we set up to do plein air painting. Now this is 19, 1975. I mean, they called it outdoor painting back then. Nobody knew what plein air painting was. And so we went to the beach and we sat there and the teacher would say, ah, oh, this is not good enough. Let's go over there. So we'd pack up all of our stuff and we'd go over there. And then he'd go, oh, no, now this is not going to be good. Let's go over on the other side of the rocks. So we'd pack up everything and we'd go over the side of the rocks. And so it was kind of like Moses. And I call this the Moses syndrome. We just kind of followed him. And I don't know if you guys know this, but Hawaii is an island. <laughs> you know? And so we basically went from location to location to location. And we kind of ended up where we started from. And we didn't do any painting. But one thing that did happen was while we were there, I got to go to a gallery. Now, I was born and raised in Lake Tahoe. There were no galleries up there, especially back then. Tahoe was just a, a gambling mecca. Um, and there, so there was no, there was no galleries to, to, be, to be had in Tahoe, and I'd never seen any museums. So I walked into this wonderful gallery, and I'm looking at palm tree, big flower, palm tree, and I come around the corner, and I see this little painting, a little bit larger than this, by an artist by the name of James Featheroff. Now, I know my stories can be quite winded, but there's a point to this. I stopped. Now, mind you, I'm like 12, 13 years old. I stopped. It was so breathtaking for a young kid to see something that amazing. I just stared at it. And the gallery owner came over and, you know, well, kid, what you, what you, I had nothing to say. And the amazing thing is, at that point, I learned something about painting. And I learned that, like you said, when I asked you what is art, it was always like me conversation. It's my power, it's my conversation, it's my this, it's my creativity, my, 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 my. But that, that James Featheroff painting, that little ocean scene, I mean, this, this artist was a Carmel painter. He shipped this over. He wasn't even in the room. This little, tiny ocean painting transformed my life. 
And what I got at that moment was, it's not about me. It's about being to inspire others. It's about causing you to feel something. Make you feel the feeling and hopefully bring something to you. Art is communication. When we listen to great music like Beethoven or Tchaikovsky, they transform us. They're not writing for themselves. When you read a book, it's not because the, the author likes to sit and mess around with words all day. Their whole key is to transform your world, to, to, to take you in from your bedroom on the bed reading a book and transport you to the Galapagos Islands and go on a journey and you forget where you're at. Art is communication. It's about bringing something that you feel and sharing it with others. And I came back from that trip completely transformed from that one painting. I went from being the worst student in the class to actually started teaching painting when I was 14. A year and a half. And I had students that were in my classroom that would complain to the teacher about this snobby kid, you know, They'd say, would you mind if we go to his house and take lessons from him? Because we want to get what he's getting in his paintings. It doesn't take long once you get that gift. Once you understand that is. That's the most important key. And so what I have developed over the period of years is a way of understanding how people understand, how people see. And it's all based on, on an experience that I had with a little old lady. And she was old. She was 100 years old in 1980. I met her. And I had already started teaching for years. And I was, I was kind of lost that feeling about touching other people. And I had moved on. I had students already. I was the most expensive art teacher in the Bay Area. And I found this lady from Poland. And how I discovered her was that I found a guy that restored paintings and he took a painting off the shelf and he unrolled it. And as he unrolled it, chips of paint were just falling off. And half the canvas was, was empty and you could see the original drawing underneath. And I looked at it and I said, so? And he goes, it's a Rubens. And I said, no, it's not. It's a bunch of chips of paint and a canvas with a drawing on it. He says, it's a Rubens. And I was like, so he called me six months later. He says, you want to come down and see the Rubens? I said, yeah. And I looked at that thing and it was fully restored and it was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. And I said, who did that? And he said, my friend, Mrs. Gugolinsky. Now, if you've watched my videos on YouTube, you would hear that name once in a while. Some of my students know about her. But Mrs. Gugolinsky was 100 years old in 1980. She was one of the first women in France studying with the Impressionists at that time. She saw the Impressionists, you know, towards the end there, but she was kind of in that, in that era when, when they were around. And I asked her, she put very broken English. And I asked her, so what's the secret to painting? And I spent all day with her. And in very broken English, she wondered why I was there in the first place. And I was trying to get information from my students. Because at that point, I was beginning to realize that they probably were realizing I didn't know that much. So I was looking for knowledge. And she said, Paint what you see. And I looked at her and I said, Ha! I get that. That's what we do. We paint what we see. Listen, you old lady, give me something I can use. 
And so all she'd come back to and she'd say, paint what you see. Paint what you see. I went home that night frustrated because I didn't get anything else. And so I called her up the next day and said, I need to talk to you again. I need something. And I spent another day, and, and her apartment was as big as this room, very, very tiny. Kitchen, dinette, and stuff, and it was kind of a high rise in San Francisco. Wall to wall paintings, 12 deep. And I sat there drinking really stale tea all day again, and that's all she gave me. And I kind of walked away from that experience going, well, you know, people like to keep their secrets. That's okay. But she gave me a gift. I just wasn't mature enough to understand that gift. And after 30 years, I still think about that day and how I rejected all that. For years and years I was teaching without really understanding what that was. Until I got a bit of information. And I did that with my students. And you know, some of you who are going to try to work with me on this experiment of this Facebook and classroom, you're going to have a little taste of it. But the thing is, you don't know what you don't know. And when we look at things, we don't really see them. So Leonardo da Vinci said, we, we, we look at things, but we don't see them. We hear things, but we don't listen. And we eat things, but we don't taste them. The problem is, is that everything that we do is based in language. You have to have an understanding of what, it, what language is for us to really get a concept of learning how to paint. There's actually a skill to that. I watch YouTube videos all the time for my colleagues and I wait for them to come up and make a point. And they'll say, oh, well, it feels like I need to put a little bit more blue over here. I feel that I need more blue over here. They dab over there, they dab over here, just you know, and I feel sorry for people trying to, you know, to understand what it is that they want to understand. If you understand the concept of how we see, if you understand the concept of laws of nature, and you're able to look at things, actually see them as they are, you'd be amazed at what you don't know. I go through an exercise with all of my students over the phone. And I would say in the last year I've had, you know, I have 110 students, but I've had more than that over the last year. And they've all done my beginning exercises, some of which, if you guys uh, participate in the program, you will, you will have a chance to kind of play around with. Um, but all these artists all started coming from my YouTube video. And they found me because they watch a lot of YouTube videos. And yet, they couldn't, they didn't even understand what it was that they were doing. They literally were contradicting themselves while they were painting, when I was talking to them. And what, what, what their understanding was completely different than what they had, so. Anyway, so, what I want to kind of get that this whole concept is about, not about me, it's about you. It's about you actually creating something for others that you actually have an idea, a thought. And if you watch my YouTube videos, one of the phrases that I say all the time is, what were you thinking? <laughs> or what were you thinking? Or what were you thinking? Because if the painting sucks, and I look at your painting and I go, what were you thinking? And you tell me what you were thinking. And I look at it and go, you know what? You did that really well. There's a lot of really shitty paintings out there that have really good meaning. I mean, look at the screen. You know, that painting is, aha. But man, that tells a story. You can identify with that. It's all about communicating to others things that you feel or that you want to express. Painting little pretty pictures is part of it. But if you can make people feel, and really the great artists, that's what they do. But you have to understand that. And it's all rooted on how we actually see light. How many of you are oil painters in the room? How many are acrylic? 
watercolor. Wow. Pastel. Pastel, yeah. Uh, how many of you do dabble in all of it? There you go. How long have you been painting? Three years. Three years? I started with oil. I'm having more success with acrylic. Ah. <laughs> I have a lot of students that call up and say, I'm an acrylic artist, is that okay? And I go, yeah. And then I switch them over to oils. And they're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, who knows? I mean, it's... It is, you know, the, 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 the thing about oil painting is that it is the, the basis of everything. So if you wanted to learn music, you'd be best off in the piano because that's basically where everything kind of originates from. Um, with oil painting, yeah? Uh, color lens for oil and Kathy is color pencil. Okay, color pencils, so we got that also covered. Yeah, hmm? Color pencils too, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, when I first started teaching, uh, nobody did oils, nobody did plain air painting. It was all watercolor. And I would give talks in front of groups and they would, you know, I'd say, how many of you are oil painters? And nobody would be there, I'd be the only one in the room. And so I would do a demonstration, kind of like what we'll do today. And um, um, I tried to filter some of the information over to watercolor. But in the concept that we're doing here, I have students that right now are watercolor artists and pastel artists and they work with me. I have a photographer in my, in my course. He's been with me four years. He's amazing. His, his work, he called me up, he says, does that concept work for photography? And I go, it should. And so basically he has kind of used all of the theories and stuff adopting that and his photography has become absolutely extraordinary because you know, I have issues with photography because they all kind of look the same he grabs something and not only that when you see his work his name is Carl Fritz when you see his work you will no longer walk in the woods again the same way he actually shows you a different way to look at things and that's kind of what it is I mean when we think about Van Gogh's sunflowers now some people love Van Gogh's some people hate Van Gogh. Some people are indifferent about Van Gogh. But one thing you have to say, that once you see Van Gogh's sunflowers, you can never look at sunflowers the same way. And if you've ever tried to paint sunflowers, you sit there and go, oh my God, this is just another Van Gogh painting. I mean, his whole being yeah, is, is ingrained into that painting. And nobody can get away from it. Um, he shows us how to look at, at uh, uh, that, and so. But getting back to the whole thought and feeling in a painting. There's a piece of music that I love that Beethoven wrote called the Moonlight Sonata. And no matter who plays that piece, no matter how it's played, even if it's played with a child's hand, with very little feeling, the music still resonates. And that's because a Moonlight Sonata it has nothing to do with moonlight or water or anything else. It's about love. And Beethoven spent his entire life wanting to be loved. And the piece is basically his yearning to have someone in, in his life. And we can all relate to that. And as humans, we have certain senses that we can relate to. We kind of know what love is. It's not all the same, but we kind of know what it is. We kind of know what hate is. We kind of know, uh, you know what uh, revenge is and, and all these things. We also see things the same way. We all have kind of a basic understanding. If we didn't, we wouldn't have language. So although we're all different, a lot of our experiences are the same. And so the whole idea behind doing the Bauman Effect is to start learning how it is that we communicate to others and put that communication into our work. And to be able to get people to see your paintings for the first time in a way that overpower the competition. So a lot of my students now that are in my course are starting to win some major, major composition, competitions um, because they're putting that element in. That's not about you, it's about others.
It's interesting when we, when we think about what stops us from being creative. Now, most of you are artists and you've kind of overcome some of your fears in art. But have you had friends that you say, hey, let's do an art class together and they immediately go, no. No, that's something other people do. It's interesting that when people have such a fear of art, and yet it's a basic thing we start off with as little children. When we think about little children, we think about crayons and paper and how absolutely free and wonderful they are. And then I get adults that are just petrified. I mean, you brought a painting in to be critiqued. Thank you. But do you know how few people really are, are able to do that, to bring a painting into a group and that you don't know and a teacher you don't know and just subject yourself? It is intimidating. So we'll have to look at it. And, and, uh, um, and those are the things that we're going to be doing online, on Facebook, on YouTube, is that we'll be looking and critiquing at works that are done. One of the most successful parts of my coaching classes with my students here in Medford was the homework assignments. And if you watch some of the YouTube videos, you know about, and you've done a lot of the, the homework assignments, you know what they are. Um, but the thing is, there were huge breakthroughs on actually painting from life. Um, and so they're, they're, uh, uh, they're amazing things. But the thing is, we're all kind of afraid to communicate. Most of you are scared to death to be doing what I'm doing right now. And that is to get up and talk to a group of people. Not only here, but also on Facebook. Um, but why is it that when we talk to our friends and we want to get them into painting, why is it that they're so fearful? Why are people so resident to, to, to go with painting? When you say, hey, let's do an art class, or do you paint? Oh, no, 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 no. The only thing I can draw are flies. Um, yeah, I can only draw, I can't even draw a straight line. I even have my students say I can't even draw a straight line, and I go, well, just control the crooked one, you'll be fine. But why is that? When you hand a child a, a, some paper and crayons, they're like totally expressive. They enjoy everything that they, they're doing at the moment. They, that, they own that. Their mom actually looks at all these purple cows and orange uh, horses and stuff, and she picks them up and she puts them up on the refrigerator. And that's the gallery. And the kids will come in and they'll go, you want to see my gallery? It's on the refrigerator. And then one day, when they're about four or five, they come home from school and all of the artwork is off the refrigerator. And they go, mommy, mommy, where's all of my artwork? And mom will go, now Harold, you know, I know you're trying really hard to be a painter, but there's no such things as purple cows. Mm -hmm. And mom just got tired of that. You need to grow up. And that's usually the very beginning 